Monday, where we are going to learn how to write the chemical name and chemical formula for all the different types of compounds, ionic and molecular, that we've talked about so far. But then we're also going to do it for acids and bases as well. So in order to do that, we have to know some polyatomic ions. Okay, so the quiz over these, and you should have picked up um, the study sheet from the front. The quiz for these are on, are going, is going to be on Tuesday, November 28th. And it's just going to be like a one and done quiz, okay? Maybe if you sweet talk me, we'll take a quiz on Monday, but that is the right after Thanksgiving, so um, we need to make sure that we're still studying these. Make some flashcards, okay? Or make a quizlet or something like that. So these are easy, but you need to memorize them now because your life will be a whole lot easier in chemistry, both in Chem 1 and in AP if you take it later. Uh, because I'm going to try and trick you, and I'm going to throw these in to every single test that you see, okay? So we're going to go through the study sheet and how you can remember them, and I'm going to give you little hints for it, and I'm going to tell you what to write down. Um, but I'm not going to go in number order. I am going to go in order, but um, it's not going to be the same, and that's because I'm going to give you hints as to how to study these. So the back side of your study sheet is blank, so I would probably take extra notes on this. And you can always pause the video or go back on the video if I'm going too fast, right? Okay, so the first list we have are the eights. All of the names end in A-T-E for the most, well, on this list they do. So the first one we have is acetate. Then we have, an acetate is C2H3O2 with a negative one sign. Now, uh, that, make sure that when you're writing them, you are using the correct format. So the smaller numbers are subscript, so they're below, and then the charge is higher up, okay? We have seen ions before, so the charge shouldn't be a really big deal, but you need to make sure that you're writing it correctly. And make sure you pay attention to capitalization as well, okay? So make those those capital. Next we have carbonate, which is CO3 with a negative 2, charge. I'll go ahead and erase that all the ink, okay, and keep going. Then we have chlorate, and chlorate contains chlorine, so that's ClO3 with a negative one, right? So um, make sure if it starts with chlor, you know we're talking about chlorine. So Cl, it's not an I, it's not a one, it's ClO3, and it has a negative one charge. Next. Chromate starts chrome, has chromium in it, and it's CrO4 with a negative 2 charge. Okay? Um, going back, carbonate starts with carbon, CO, right? So uh, that's another way to remember that it's going to have carbon in it. Acetate, mm, can't get that from the name. Sorry. Okay, next we have dichromate. So it still is chromate, but there's two of them because it's Cr2O7 with a negative 2 charge. So the dye in front of the chromate is helping you to remember that you should put a little subscript 2 after the Cr. Okay? And the, tr the charge is twice as much. Next, we have hydrogen carbonate, which is also called bicarbonate. So um, the, word, the different names can be used interchangeably. Hydrogen carbonate is nice because hydrogen and then the carbon, right, tells you that it's going to be starting with an H and a C, and then it's O3 with a negative one charge. But bicarbonate, I tend to use near the end, near the test, or from here on out, because that's just one word. It's less space. Um, also, if you've ever heard of sodium bicarbonate, baking soda, that contains this polyatomic ion. Okay. After that, we are going to skip down a little bit to oxalate, which is going to be C2O4 with a negative 2 charge. Now, you can't get the name from this one either, but one student I had one year say to me that, oh, I remember oxalate because the subscripts 2, 4, and then the charge 2, if you add 2 plus 4 plus 2, that's equal to 8, and oxalate sounds like 8. 
If that works for you, awesome. If it doesn't, that's okay too. Just a way to remember maybe. Okay, next we have permanganate and it has mangan in here, which is supposed to help you think of manganese, which is MN. So permanganate is MnO4 with a negative one charge. And then we have, oops, that's not all. I didn't actually go through all of them, did I? Oh, yes, I did. Okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> okay, so those are not all of the eights, right? We skipped them. We skipped uh, nitrate and phosphate and sulfate. Um, and so I have a trick that it maybe will help you to remember them, okay? So my trick, you just have to listen to this, okay? It's kind of weird. You, we're also going to add in chlorine or chlorate as well, okay? So the way that it goes, um, it says clo, no, clo, no, so, po. Clonosopo, clonosopo, clonosopo. And that's because all of them have O's. And so this is going to be for chlorate. This is going to be for nitrate. And then sulfate. And phosphate. So notice how the first letter, or the first symbol element, in each of those is the one that would be you would think so nitrate oh yeah of course it's going to start with nitrogen or sulfate it's going to start with sulfur right so the element that you think from the name is going to start it does and then they all have oxygens after that so clonosopo and then here come the numbers okay the next the first set of numbers are all the charges okay so it's double one so one one double one two three double one two three and all of these are negatively charged so it's a double negative one two three okay and then the last part is double three double four because they end up like that okay chlorate is clo3 with a negative one charge which we already wrote down nitrate is no3 with a negative one charge sulfate is so4 with a negative two charge and phosphate is a PO4 with a negative three charge, okay? So again, I'll teach you this in class in person, but the, the poem or rhythm or whatever you wanna say goes, clonosopo, negative double one, two, three, double three, double four. And that's supposed to get you all four of these. And the reason why I have this is because the next rule that we have um, for some more coming up, if you know the eights, there's like nine or something, I'm not gonna count right now, but there's a ton of eights. And if you can remember the eights, you're almost halfway there for the whole quiz. Because we have another rule, depending on the names, to do from here. The eight is kind of like our base of what we're thinking about, okay? So next, we have the ites. And so, for anything with ite, like chlorite or nitrite or phosphite or sulfite, you're gonna take off one oxygen, but you're gonna keep the charge the same as what was on the eights. Okay, so it's the same charge as the eights. Okay, so chlorite is ClO2 with a negative one charge. We dropped one O. Nitrite, NO2, negative one. Phosphite, PO3 with a negative three charge, and sulfite, SO3 with a negative two charge. Okay, uh, so you're gonna drop an oxygen off, but everything else will stay the same. The letters stay the same, and the charge stays the same as the eight form. So chlorate and chlorite both have ClO for the letters, and they both have a negative one charge. For sulfate versus sulfite, they both have SO for the letters, and they have a negative two charge. The oxygens are what are changing it, and that's what that little tiny difference is what makes them have more polyatomic ions. Now, you might have said, what about hypochlorite? That one ends in ite, but you didn't do anything with it. Well, with having hypo in front, you take off another oxygen from the chlorite version. Okay, so that means hypochlorite is ClO negative one. So there's only one oxygen there, no subscript on the O. Okay, 
And I think that's the only hypo we have on this list. So we're getting there, we're filling it in. Even though we don't have to know them, you could also use this rule to have hypophosphite, hyponitrite, hyposulfite, or anything like that. Um, but I don't need you to know those. I just want you to know hypochlorite because hypochlorite is actually in bleach and a few other common household items. All right, so what if it has a per in front of the eight? This is probably one of the only eights we have left, right? And that is, uh, we already did permanganate because we don't have to know anything else about the other eights with permanganate, but we didn't do perchlorate, okay? So perchlorate, if ite means you're taking off oxygens, per in front of the word of eight means you add another oxygen. So perchlorate has four O's, so it's ClO4 with a negative one charge, okay? Still the charge stays the same, still the letters stay the same, but we're increasing the number of oxygens. We also have peroxide on this list, which is O2 with a negative two charge, and that one throws people. Uh, if you ever heard of hydrogen peroxide, it contains this polyatomic ion. Um, and the reason why we can count it as a per is because oxide ion that we learned in chapter seven is O with a negative two charge. So peroxide means we added an additional oxygen. So that's why it's O2 with a negative two charge. Again, even though we don't have to know them, we could know about pernitrate and persulfate and perphosphate, but we don't need to know that in Chem 1. All right. Uh, we have a couple that have IDE endings, right? So these are not like the ions from the last couple of slides. These you just have to know, okay? Um, so first one I have is cyanides on the list. Uh, that's a C, capital C, capital N with negative one charge. That's carbon and nitrogen in there. Um, I have students who remember cyanide because of Cartoon Network. It looks like Cartoon Network, right? So maybe that's a way to remember it. I don't know, we'll see. Whatever you can do, right? Hydroxide is OH with a negative one charge. Now hydroxide, you can kind of get it from the name, which cyanide you can too, I guess. If you look at cyanide has C and an N, and that gives you CN with a negative one charge. Hydroxide has the H and the O, but hydro sounds like hydrogen, and oxide sounds like oxygen, right? So even if you, like if you're looking at the word and you get it from the word, I would still accept as a correct answer if you would write HO with a negative one instead of an OH with a negative one, okay? So either one of those will be acceptable. I will always write it OH because that's what I do, but if you write HO, it'll still be correct. Okay, and the last but not least, we have ammonium, and this one's special because it's the only positive charged polyatomic ion on our entire list. Um, so, ammonium is NH4 with a plus one charge. We drew that one for the polyatomic ion way of drawing Lewis structures in chapter eight. Uh, but that's the only positive one. And I don't know how to make you remember that, but hopefully you remember that's the only positive one. And it has no A's or M's in it either. So, that is it. Um, hopefully, if you need to rewatch this or watch this again before the quiz, please do so. Uh, now, in class, you are going to use the cards to uh, play either matching. Uh, there's only 21 this time, so it's a lot less than the elements. Or you can play Go Fish. Um, and the winning person from each group will receive a mole buck for class today. So use your study list. Make flashcards. Make a Quizlet. Study these, study these, study these. The quiz is on Tuesday after we get back from Thanksgiving. All right? Good luck.